Okay, the title of this one, I suppose, would be Do People Pick Grapes from Thorns or Figs from Thistles? And I'll start reading here. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And I'm going to start at verse 15. Beware of false prophets. I'm going to stop right there. Whenever, whenever I see the word beware, I, I make a note of that every time. I take that seriously. When the scripture says to be aware of something, be on the lookout, be on guard. Beware of false prophets, false preachers, false men of God. You know, I could also add here, be aware of false parents. Be aware of false husbands. who come to you dressed as sheep. Ah, oh, these coverts. My goodness, they love the virtue signal, don't they? They will come to you as innocent as a little lamb. But inwardly, inside, their true self are devouring wolves and they devour other souls. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns? Do people gather figs and fruit from thistles? I wish I could say no. That anyone with half a brain would not pick grapes from, a, would not even bother looking for grapes on a thorn bush. Most people know better than to pick figs or apples or oranges from a thistle. Where I'm from, we have thistles. <laughs> and uh, you, you don't, you don't want to handle those without gloves. They will tear you up. They're, they're th very thorny. They're not edible. They're not good for anything. They kill cattle. They kill cattle. I've never seen one, I've never even seen a young child attempt to pick fruit from a thistle bush, much less attempt to eat the, the, the flower on it. I've never seen that. Even a young child has better sense than that, but I wish I could say we, that we don't pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles because we are taught so often, not just in church either, but in society as a whole. We are coerced, compelled, <laughs> and constrained and forced, if you will, to go ahead and pick a fig from that thistle bush. Go ahead and see if you can't find an apple or an orange from that thorn bush. Now what do I mean by that? Well, here I go again. I, I love to rant about this, and I probably always will. But uh, this heretical teaching, let me, let me start at the root of it. And this probably will make 
some people upset. But I, I ask you to hear me out and study the Bible for your... Prove me wrong. Pro, uh, prove me wrong. But you'd better have Scripture to do it. This belief that God's love is unconditional... That simply is not true. God does not love wicked people. He hates them. He hates them for good reason. He hates Wolves that dress up like sheep in order to devour the poor. To devour the poor in spirit. We see it, Tony and I see it every single day. Every single day we see wolves devouring sheep. And you know, most of these wolves are dressed like sheep themselves that we've seen. They come off so pious. They come off so virtuous and nice. And, and, and we provide cover for them with this doctrine that uh, it has permeated every aspect, not just of religious society but society secular society thrives in this doctrine that God just loves everybody no there are certain trees that God likes there are certain trees that he does not like The trees that bring forth good fruit, he likes, he loves. The trees that bring forth, in case you guys didn't notice, I have kitties. <laughs> they make life interesting. Trees that don't bear good fruit as we'll read in the scripture, they are, let me read it, they are cut down and cast into the fire. Completely obliterated. Completely cut off. We see it every day. <laughs> we see it every day. Sheep being eaten and devoured by wolves and the wolves the wolves roam around freely with big smiles <laughs> i don't mean to sound graphic but this is how i see it the wolves walk around in their sheep suit with big smiles on their faces getting away with it the blood yeah the yeah the blood the fresh blood the still innocent. dripping down their 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 snout in their mouth, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, these sheep don't know. They're they're still trying to process what's going on. I see it every day. and hiding under this cover, this invisible cover, unspoken by and large, that the supreme court of the universe, that the divine judge of all things seen and unseen, somehow or other stepped down from that role and just is everybody's little sugar daddy. He's not. He's still on that throne. And he is still judge. And he doesn't love everybody. 
that man or woman that abused you, that wolf. God has a destiny for him. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? We're taught to. We are taught to pick grapes from thorn bushes, aren't we? When we're told to walk in kindness and in love towards a malignant man or woman, just by virtue of the fact you share the same DNA, that has nothing to do with what we're at. we are talking about. DNA, genetics, flesh. We're talking spirit. I'm talking spiritually. God talks spiritually. That's why most people don't understand what he's saying. And sadly to say, I, when I say most people don't understand what God is saying, I'm talking about our preachers and pastors and theologians. They don't have a clue. Some do. They're hard to find. I, I have been able to find a few. The one I'm thinking of right now, Pastor Jeff Crippen, I don't know if he has 20 members in his church. He ought to have 20,000. No, we're told to go ahead and look for a grape in that thorn bush and focus on that grape. The malignant person is a thorn bush. The narcissist is a thistle. You're not going to get good fruit out of him, no matter how hard you try. I don't care what kind of fertilizer you put on that thistle. I don't care how much tender, loving care you provide that thistle. It's still a thistle. And it's always going to be a thistle. Till the day it dies, it's going to be a thistle. And God gathers up thistles. This is what he thinks of thistles. He casts them into eternal fire. Okay, verse 17. Every healthy tree bears good fruit, but sickly trees bear bad fruit. I'm not going to eat from a sick tree. In fact, just this morning I cut open an avocado, and it, it was gray on the inside. It was rotten. Well, I... <laughs> I didn't I I made the decision not to put that into my system. I care about my body. I don't want to get sick. I I mean Tony wouldn't do this, but it wouldn't have mattered if Tony would have come up to me and said, "You need to forgive that avocado. <laughs> you need to love that avocado. Go ahead and eat it." Don't judge it. Don't judge that avocado. You, you put that gray, nasty thing in your mouth and you eat it. And you like it. Thank God she didn't say that. She agreed with me. or I, Not this morning, but she would have agreed with me and said, Throw that thing away. That thing will make you sick. And she's right, it would have. Do people pick grapes from thorns? Uh, that around here they do. They try to. We look for grapes on, among thorn bushes here in the Bible Belt. 
rather than recognizing a thorn bush for what it is, try to warn as many people as we can, do not even look for fruit on that sucker. In fact, if, if be careful if you're trying to look for fruit on it. It might prick you. Now, we don't tell them that. We tell them, <laughs> a tree is a tree. A bush is a bush. God loves them all. Am I making sense? Yeah. You're all sinners saved by We're grace. We're all sinners saved by grace. There is some truth to that. But we're not all wicked. And there's a difference between sinner and wicked. In fact, let me talk about that. Here's a verse that, I'm not going to look it up, but here's a verse that had me, and it still has a lot of people, a lot of Christians, confused. And it's, it's in First John, and he, he writes that uh, no man born of God, I, I'm, I may be getting this wrong, I think this is what it says, no man who is born of God committeth sin, or practice, I'm sorry, practices sin, uh, for God's nature is in him. Not commit, practice. The key word there is practice. The sinner, of which I am, saved by grace. (laughs) But the sinner is not practicing sin. I'm not trying to get better at sin. I'm trying to be free of it. My heart is to please God. My heart is to walk according to my spirit, not my flesh. Is this it? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Wicked people practice at it. They work at it. They're trying to get good at it. They're trying to improve their skill set when it comes to deception. They consider it a craft. Evil. They study it. Many of them do. There are men and women at the top of the Babylonian food chain, or you know, the elite we call them, who go to great lengths to practice lawlessness. These are what the scripture call wicked these trees I'm talking about thorn trees and thistles these are wicked sinners don't put on sheep suits before they go out and for fun devour all the real sheep not even because they're hungry They just do it for fun. That's not just your garden variety sinner, much less a sinner saved by grace. When we talk about narcissists, particularly malignant narcissists, it is on a spectrum. We are talking about the real deal. (laughs) The real deal when it comes to wicked men. Wicked men are earmarked 
by the false self. And I'm not going to talk about that today. But I think most of you are keenly aware of that dynamic. The wolf in sheep's clothing. This comes to mind even Lucifer himself can transform himself into an angel of light. That's the kind of person I'm talking about. The kind who you have to practice in order to, and a lot of practice, in order to look like a sheep, to look like a lamb when your heart is that of a, a ravenous wolf. It takes practice. And I believe that's what John's talking about. The guy who works at it. <laughs> I'm working at trying to get free of it. And I know you are too. Anyone who loves God is. No, I'm... You know... It, I don't know why I'm starting to think this way, but probably because I'm kind of in it now myself. There are some situations where you just can't up and go no contact with any old malignant narc. Not in today's culture. We, we are in those days that Paul wrote about to Timothy, perilous days in which men are lovers of themselves. Dangerous times in which we have an entire generation of narcissists. So it's man if you can if you can get off the narcissistic grid that is wonderful. And I think we should work at that. I think that is our a key weapon to expose these people is no contact or having nothing to do with them. But that said, if, if you can't go no contact with a particular malignant individual, at least don't eat their fruit. Don't take what, do not take what they communicate to you internally. Do not internalize anything from a malignant person. You resist it spiritually, mentally, and physically if you can. Or legally if you can. So even if you are stuck in a situation... Now, if you're a child growing up with a parent like this, man, I don't know. I, I have no good solution for you because that's where Tony and I were raised. And a lot of times, man, it is just survival. It's disgusting. But I'm thinking, say you're married to one. You don't have to eat the fruit he's given you. Spit it out. Spiritually speaking, metaphorically speaking, spit it out. Spit out any opinion he has of you. It, 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 it's not worth the saliva that spews out of your mouth when you do spit. He's worthless. Worthless Worthless communications, worthless projections flowing out of a worthless human being. And that's how you should look at it. If you're stuck in a relationship with a wicked person, you still have the power inside you not to partake of the... Uh, uh, of the uh, the fruit that they're attempting to feed you. Maintain your spiritual uh, autonomy at all costs. Even if you have to sneak in the time to feed your spirit on the Word of God, do it. <laughs> 
I don't know. I think I've said enough. Um, I hope this came out okay. I really didn't do any studying for this lesson. So. Woo! We pray for you. We love you guys. Um, we're seeing a little bit of <laughs> weird chatter on, on, in the comments. Possible trolls. Uh, probably trolls, though. But uh, that's okay. That's all right. God bless you. God bless every one of you. Even the trolls. God bless you. Amen.